Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to welcome you to this very interesting symposium on optimal treatment strategy based on platelet reactivity testing. As you know, we have now different treatment modalities for platelet inhibition available, not only clopidogrel, but other newer drugs. So um, that's why this topic, I think, is very interesting and it's very up-to-date because it's not only measuring platelet function, but also uh, um, giving you um, rules for treatment strategies in our patients. I have a very uh, distinct uh, panel here with two very distinguished lecturers, and I'm uh, supposed to give the first talk. My talk is entitled The Role of Platelet Reactivity Testing for Optimizing Treatment Strategies. So there's my bias. I'm an interventional cardiologist, so I really and deeply hate stent thrombosis. These are my disclosures. As you know, this symposium is sponsored by Archimetrics. I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept of high on treatment platelet reactivity. This is based on the var var variable response of clopidogrel, which is due to the genetic polymorphism, mainly due to uh, uh, genetic uh, polymorphism of the sub 2 c 19 allele, which leads to uh, a variable generation of active met metabolites, leading to a wide pharma pharmacodynamic response uh, some extent of hyper-responsiveness to the full extent of non-responsiveness. And intuitively, if your drug is not working, as you can measure that, um, this should lead to a worse clinical outcome. And I will show you the data for that, that this is uh, what intuitively makes sense is really true. So there are innumerable studies linking high on treatment platelet reactivity to ischemic events. And this is just an absolutely incomplete list of trials uh, who have measured platelet reactivity and linked it to uh, ischemic events. I won't go into detail in this list, but um, as this is a daily problem in the CAS lab, the test should be easy and simple. And few, uh, some tests of this, like VASP, index measurement is time consuming and difficult to do it. Um, it needs cytometric analysis. You need a lab technician, takes a couple of hours. The same for the light transmission aggregatometry, which takes a few hours. So you need a simple test. And this is a, a, bench, uh, a bedside test, the verify now assay, a cartridge based system. So you need uh, a very low amount of blood and you have the result of the test within two to five minutes. You can do that in the cath lab before or during the PCI procedure and then immediately get a result. So the goal of the measurement is to assess the amount of platelet aggregation inhibition. And the optimal response is defined as a 40 to 60% platelet inhibition in the maintenance phase on chronic P 2Y12 receptor blockers, which means that in, in, in the best case, a patient should be on 75 milligram clopidogrel for at least five days. And if you measure it after a loading dose of 600 milligram, there should be at least 12 hours in between. And the definition of hyper-responsiveness differs a little bit between trials. So the most accepted cutoff value is 230. So all patients beyond 230 platelet reactivity units can be addressed as hyperresponders. The other trials having a more liberal definition uh, for hyperresponsiveness, setting the cutoff to 208 PRU. I would like to show you a meta-analysis on six prospective studies with more than 3,000 3, patients. And in all those uh, studies, the Verify Now assay was used to measure platelet reactivity. Uh, it was published last year in Czech by the group of Brauer and George Dangers. Primary endpoint of this analysis was the probability of death, myocardial infarction, and stent thrombosis at two years. 
And it, as you can see by these Kaplan-Meier curves, if you make four quartiles of those patients, the patients with the best inhibition, here the lowest quartiles of um, PRU, they have the best outcome and the lowest event rates in terms of death, myocardial infarction, and stent thrombosis. Whereas the group in the highest quartile has a almost three times higher event rate. When you set the cutoff value of 230 and divide the patient population in these two groups, which means one third of those patients are by definition hyper-responsiveness, then you have a 2.1-fold increase in um, event rates in terms of death, myocardial infarction, or stent thrombosis. When you break the composite endpoint down into its single endpoints, death, myocardial, and stent thrombosis, as you can see here, even for death, um, high on treatment platelet reactivity uh, was associated with a worse outcome. And the best predictive value was for stent thrombosis with a hazard ratio of 2.5. When you look at selected subgroups, this is true for basically all subgroups, for gender or even for older patients, and for ACS patients, which I will show you in a minute in another study. So to summarize this meta-analysis, um, it showed that in quartile analysis, high clopidogrel on treatment platelet reactivity is associated with an increase in the composite of death MI and stent thrombosis as well as MI and stent thrombosis. And by area under the curve analysis, the optimal cut point for defining high on treatment clopidogrel responsiveness was 230. And high on treatment platelet reactivity, meaning PRU more than 230, was associated with these three uh, um, endpoints as I've showed you. So you could argue this is a meta-analysis. Um, you have publication bias and you have more biases. So when we're talking about on dealing with stent thrombosis, which is a relatively low event rate, then we need a prospective trial registry with a, a really large number of patients. In terms of stent thrombosis, you need a very large number. Do we have this? Yes, we have this registry. It's called the ADAPT-DS registry. PI is Dr. Greg Stone. It's uh, a large-scale prospective multicenter registry examining the relationship between platelet responsiveness and stent thrombosis after implantation of drug-eluting stent. And when we talk about a large trial, it's really a large trial. More than 8,500 patients were prospectively enrolled. And it was a daily practice trial. So all patients were consecu consecutively enrolled in the case when at least one drug eluding stent was implanted at nine sites in US and two in Germany. We had an IVOS subgroup and platelet function was assessed with a very fine now system. We had a clinical follow-up at 30 days, one year and up to two years. Our site at the Charité in Berlin uh, enrolled almost 1,500 patients in this trial. And um, just very briefly, I don't want to go through the baseline features, but I want to draw your attention that this is an all-comer population. It's a, it's a daily PCI population. More than 30% diabetics in this trial. Although also uh, more than 50% acute coronary syndromes in this trial, 10% stay my patients. And finally, we had 250 patients with stents in the left main. So this is a huge database where we can assess these different risk groups here. Coming to the results of the testing, um, if you just look at this line, um, about one third of the patients had a PRU more than 230 and more than 40%, more than 208 PRU. So this is in line with previous trials and experiences that around one third of the patients falls under the definition of hyper-responsiveness. Within the first 30 days, we had 39 stent thrombosis events, which you can see here. Um, most of them definite stent thrombosis, which means angiographically proven stent thrombosis. And if, when you divide these the patient group with events to the 
of course, uh, extremely larger group of patients without stent thrombosis, within the 30 days, you can see that the percentage of patients who are hyper-responsive to clopidogrel is much larger in this stent thrombosis group, which is statistically highly significant. When you, we look at the Kaplan-Meier curves, you can see a dose almost a dose response. These are quintiles, so this patient group has the best platelet inhibition uh, under chronic clopidogrel treatment, and um, the, the, the highest quintile here has a fourfold higher chance of definite or probable stent thrombosis. And however, you look at the data, if you take a cutoff of 208, and it's the same with 230, you have around a fourfold increased hazard for stent thrombosis within 30 days. This is the limitation for the day. I can only present you the 30-day data. Uh, we have an abstract at the TCT meeting in Miami later this year with the one-year data, and they look very exciting. Um, some statistical insights uh, in uh, these um, 30 days um, results. This is a multivariable Cox proportional hazard ratio model um, for definite or probable stent thrombosis. And as you can see, depending on this cutoff value, if you take 230, around th uh, a, a threefold adjusted hazard ratio for stent thrombosis, definite or probable. And if you take, if you cut it down to the angiographically um, proven stent thrombosis, then you have even a higher association with a five-fold adjusted hazard ratio, which means that between 50 and 66% of the stent thrombosis is due to hyperresponsiveness or is attributable to hyperresponsiveness. As I already mentioned, acute coronary syndromes are interesting in terms of stent thrombosis because they have a much higher rate of stent thrombosis. Um, here these numbers that disappeared, but there's a threefold higher um, chance of getting stent thrombosis in an ACS situation or after an ACS situation compared to elective cases. And um, stema, this should, should be 1.5%. Stema patients they have the highest risk of stent thrombosis. So um, that's why this uh, analysis was limited to the ACS patient, patient with acute coronary syndrome. And again, this um, 40 to 60% of all stent thrombosis can be attributed to hyperresponsiveness. So in summary, I think it's fair to conclude that there's overwhelming scientific evidence that high on treatment platelet reactivity is associated with an increased rate of ischemic events. Therefore, the ESC guidelines from last year for um, non ST elevation, Macaulay infarction, coronary syndrome, rec they recommend consideration of platelet function testing in selected cases. This is a 2B recommendation with the level of evidence of B. So the question is what are selected cases? And as I think showed to you, these are the diabetics and in particular the patients with acute coronary syndromes, as long as you put them not on the newer drugs. Um, to start with, but it can also be complex anatomic situations like bifurcation, stenting with more than one stent or left main stenting. And we have this database of the ADAPT US trial and we try to separate um, these cases out of um, this registry and, um, and, and try to, to, uh, to define more precisely which selected cases benefit the most from plated function testing and then maybe switching to another agent. So if the PRU is more than 230, if you have a case like this, how could you manage it? Um, I think the first thing is you should make sure that the compliance of the patient is uh, in line. If in doubt, you could confirm um, hyperresponsiveness by genetic testing. And there are different possibilities, which leads to, my next, uh, to, to our next speaker. Um, you could double the clopidogrel dose to twice daily. That's an opportunity which was not supported at, in, the, in the total population group by the Gravitas trial, which came out negative. But uh, for me, the conclusion should be different. You could double the clopidogrel dose and then remeasure platelet function. And if it's then effective, 
the patient should have an improved outcome. Or you consider switching to prosocal or ticagrelor. Um, in all cases, you should consider the bleeding risk and by this try to find a tailored therapy for the patient. Thank you very much.